I'm going to take you on a tour of one of the largest building brick toy stores in the world. This is Atlanta Brick Co and it's got so much incredible stuff. So in this video I wanted to highlight some of the really cool stuff that's there as well as just talk a little bit about the joy of hunting for Lego and how that's just one of the awesome ways you can improve the way that you spend time with Lego. So let's dive in. So yeah, right off the bat you can see just how much is available here. Um, I actually, when I went to Atlanta uh, last year, I went to Atlanta specifically to come to this store. Uh, I watched a lot of the YouTube videos about this store and was, was very excited to come and visit it. You can see that there's a, a lot of just sort of individual bricks that you can pick up for pretty decent prices. Pretty much everything here is based off of uh, what it is on BrickLink. I'll show you at the end of the video everything that I got while I was here. But in the meantime, I think it's cool to just see a plethora of different pieces. You know, as nice as it is to build stuff with pieces or have these pieces to finish off a, a set or something like that, sometimes I just like looking at uh, a lot of interesting pieces. And I always think it's interesting too to see the prices of a lot of these pieces. I'm going to touch upon that uh, as we explore further in this video. But there's something really joyous about just knowing what pieces are worth and being surprised by really unique pieces that might be worth more than you expected. There's certainly a lot of used sets you can get here too. Some of them will be pre-built or like missing minifigures or maybe like missing like a couple different pieces. But it's a nice way to pick up stuff at a slightly cheaper cost in that sense. Uh, but you can also see some of these like really like kind of holy grail sets uh, that are still in box. You can also get them certified pre-owned, which basically just means that it's been opened and repackaged. All the pieces are still there. You're just getting it in a uh, pre-owned state as it, as it were. But there is something really electric about seeing uh, some of these old sets uh, still in box. You know, a lot of people talk about the dream, the dream where you, you go to bed and suddenly you have a dream that, oh my God, Bionicle's back on the shelves. There's a whole wall filled with it. You're like, wow, I can't believe it or you can have the same dream not related about Bionicle specifically. It could be, you know, oh my god, Classic Castle's back on the shelves and it's all retail price and blah. And I guess this is kind of the closest you can get to that. There's something very exciting about that. At least as a LEGO fan, that's how I feel anyway. As we start to explore the store a little bit more, there's a section over here for custom minifigures. And now custom minifigures are something that I very much enjoy because a lot of the time when I'm building with LEGO, it's a way for me to express my love of things like Marvel or Star Wars because LEGO's kind of the perfect medium to represent a lot of that. But there's many times because both Star Wars and Marvel and many other themes that relate to it have so many different characters. LEGO hasn't made all of them, especially certain like key characters. So it's nice in this sense to be able to get some custom minifigures to be able to do this. Uh, so I, one, just love looking at this because it's like, oh, it's Silver Surfer or oh, it's another character that I really enjoy. But at the same time, time uh, you know I like getting certain custom minifigures just for a mock that I might have in mind that uh, can't be built with pre-existing minifigures. This isn't an ad by the way I just really liked going to this store and it was really fun to explore it and I just wanted to uh, share that with you guys um, but I mean hey if you're in Atlanta or you want to go to their website or whatever you may as well check it out because there is some really cool stuff here and I'm sure you'll have uh, as much of a good time as I did while I was there. Another thing that's really cool here is the I guess pick a brick that's probably the best way to word it very similar to what you have at the Lego store but a much larger selection. A lot of the bulk Lego that comes into Atlanta Brick Co can end up here uh, and people just spend all day picking through it. I did the same. I think I spent like four hours like sorting through and looking around the store at the same time. It was really fun. Um, but what I really like is the, the containers that you have to be able to pick from. You can see them here. Um, so either you can do it by weight, which is uh, normally a pretty good way of approaching things, uh, or you have these larger and easier to, to stack Lego in kind of containers. Uh, the pick a brick containers at the Lego store are good, but the curvature of them can make it difficult to really pack a lot of Lego in. And sometimes they put Lego pieces in there that just don't really fit in the cup. Uh, so having it in this more rectangular container is very helpful. Uh, and there was some brilliant pieces in there. I'll show you at the end of the video what I ended up getting from here, but this was uh, easily one of the best parts of the store. And so this here is what I was talking about before with it just being interesting to study the prices. Here's a bunch of Lego dinosaurs. We can see the Indominus Rex for 99 bucks. That's a surprisingly expensive dinosaur. And we're going to look at a bunch of other different animals now. And you may look at some of them like the goat, for example, and be like, that's insanely expensive, but that's just what they're worth. Isn't it interesting, and this is in my opinion, to study uh, the prices and be like, whoa, what, you know? Um, and the goat is one of the very famous Lego pieces that's worth a lot. There's just a lot of high demand for it, and it only came in one set. Uh, and everyone likes goats. They're kind of the perfect animal for any kind of castle mark or... 
and just a lot of different mocks, farms, all sorts of things. So it's just really interesting to study them here and see it all. But there's also something nice about animals because they work well for so many different mocks and seeing so many in one place is very pleasing. We can also see some of these painted fish pieces to look like actual fish. As nice as the original Lego fish are, uh, they all kind of look the same, just slightly different colors, right? So the, giving them like a clownfish pattern and stuff like that is a clever idea. And honestly, looking back at that goat, that's actually a pretty decent price for it. It's still expensive, I know, but I've seen that go for two, three hundred dollars. Uh, so it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You also got to factor in things like shipping and all sorts of other stuff. But, you know, when you compare it to BrickLink, it's good pricing, at least in my opinion. And hey, maybe you'd look at some of these animals now and be like, whoa, I didn't know that was worth that much. I'm totally going to sell it and then use that money to buy other cool Lego. Uh, so hey, it's nice to study these prices. You never know what kind of treasures you might uncover. And I'm showing you now this really cool city that's in the center of the store here. And you can press some buttons and trains move. It lights up. All sorts of cool movement and fun stuff happens. Uh, which it's rare to see this kind of level of detail with such an awesome build in the center of the store. Uh, if you watch the other Atlanta Brick Co. behind the scenes store tour that I've done, you'll know that Mark Erickson and his brother from um, Lego Masters America, uh, they actually work at this store. So they've had a hand at building this. But there's a lot of other very talented builders that work there and they help put this together with a bunch of fantastic movie references and nice buildings and funny moments and things all throughout the city. It's really cool. And the store does sell some lights too if you want to light up your mocks much like you see here too. So very helpful. I may have bought some. Let's get into some of the good, you know, meat and potato sets here. You know, let's start with Star Wars, start off strong. Uh, again, many sets you can get in box, new and old, but there's also a good amount of shelves here with a lot of lovely minifigures on them. Uh, but also as well, just a bunch of sets that have been uh, built. So you can buy them built, or if you want, you can also buy them uh, sans minifigures. So it makes it a little bit cheaper, which, you know, maybe you want the Ghost, which is such an awesome set and such an awesome ship from a brilliant show. Uh, but, you know, that's a very expensive set. So maybe just taking out the minifigures might help reduce that cost a little bit, and then you have it in your collection, you know, so... That's a, a nice, uh, affordable and cheap way of being able to get stuff that may not be as easy to get. Or maybe you don't even care about the minifigures, you just want the set itself. Come to the store. I swear this isn't an ad, guys. I just really like what they do. Um, some stuff with the minifigures that I thought was interesting, again, with like pricing and everything. It was cool to see uh, different prices of like clone troopers, which have shot up so much in value over the years. Uh, same thing can be said with some of these light up minifigures. I remember playing with those a bunch when they were in stores. Uh, when Revenge of the Sith was coming out, they're really cool and they're really interesting, but they certainly have that unique classic look to them. And I think that's also something that's nice, you know, looking at all of these different minifigures like this is seeing how LEGO has evolved their minifigures over the years because there's a beautiful brilliant charm to the original classic minifigures or even certain minifigures where um, license themes hadn't transitioned into like flesh tones and stuff uh, so it's just cool to see how LEGO have evolved the ways that they make their minifigures now and being able to see them all on the shelf like this you can't really see that anywhere else unless you have them in your collection or you go to see someone's collection and that's not always an easy thing to do so I like seeing that here and now you might be looking at this and being like oh, I wish I lived in Atlanta and hey I agree I live in Australia where this sort of stuff just doesn't exist uh, but if you are in the US which according to the YouTube analytics most of you are um, bear in mind that there's stores in America like Bricks and Minifigures for example and I believe there's one in pretty much every state um, so you can always go to stores like that which will be pretty similar to this they may not be to the same scale as Atlanta Brick Co because this is a, a massive store but um, you can certainly get similar stuff if you look up a Bricks and Minifigures store that might be within your area there but uh, hey do a bit of research you never know uh, you, you might have just completely missed a store that was like this that's nearby and we've just been treated to seeing some beautiful classic castle there one of the most amazing themes and one of my favorites for sure but let's go to one of my other favorites now it's Bionicle Time so there's something so nice about seeing all these Bionicles on the shelf here and uh, some of the ones at the bottom here that are still like sealed in box or maybe not sealed they've been open but they come with the box at least something about that that just like awakens something inside me where I just feel like a kid again and I'm like oh, I remember being in the store looking at those sets still sealed in box when they were brand new on the shelves and uh, it's just lovely to be able to see that in the store again because you don't get many opportunities to do that these days it's lovely uh, but there's a bunch of cool stuff on display here obviously some uh, you know it's primarily Bionicle focused but we can see a few Hero Factory sets even this Hero Factory combo model on display here certainly wasn't expecting to see that for sale but that's cool um, it's also cool to note the Xamospheres that are here in these little containers. Some of them are not cheap, like three, four, five dollars, and you know, depending on the set you get, there are some very rare Xamospheres. Uh, and, and one thing to remember is that 
they don't inherently look like Lego, do they? You know, a bunch of people just throw them out. They don't even think they're Lego or, you know, yes, you got a few of them with whatever set you bought them with, but you probably fired them around your room and lost them. Uh, so because of that, they demand sometimes a hefty fee. So have a look into that. You might just, you know, sell those atmospheres you're not touching and make a small fortune. Who knows? You may also notice some Ben 10 sets in here. Uh, these are no longer at the store because I bought them shortly after recording this video. That being said, the majority of the stuff you're seeing right now probably won't still be in the store. I recorded this uh, August last year and I'm only getting around now to uh, recording it because I've been a busy boy but um, that's actually pretty much a general rule for this store. So many people come in and buy and sell stuff from the store. There's no guarantee you'll see the exact same items there a week after you last visited sort of thing. So uh, certainly worth noting that but it's still cool to look at what's there anyway, isn't it? One of the more interesting sections now over here is some of the rarer stuff. Stuff you don't see every day, stuff you might not even know exists. So these here are employee business cards. If you ever get a business card from a Lego employee that works for the company, they don't give you a piece of paper, they give you a minifigure and on the back of it is phone numbers and emails and all that stuff so you can contact them, which is such a cool idea. Uh, but sometimes these get out there in the wild and then people sell them, but they're super cool. Uh, there's even stuff here like some old classic Lego cars that are not actually made of Lego, but yet these were still produced uh, in older Lego sets. Uh, it's, again, just weird stuff that you, you know, never really see at a store like this. There's also some exclusive Lego store opening minifigures, one for a, I believe it's the 100th store in the US opening, uh, and some other ones here that just are pretty traditional minifigures, but on the back of them it says the store opening, and those are not cheap. I've seen those on Bricklink before, they demand a hefty price. Uh, and additionally in this shelf we can see some other odd Lego themes like Znap, a theme that most people assume isn't Lego. I remember thinking it was Kinex when I was a kid, but that was Lego. I don't know why that was Lego, but uh, hey, it's a thing they produced at one point. Uh, and then a bunch of other old sets that you can see on the shelves here too. So some really weird and wonderful stuff. It's great to see. Some other stuff that's nice to see, uh, which is just close to this shelf in the store, are uh, some mocks that can actually be purchased. A lot of these appear to be modular buildings, but there's a bunch of different stuff as well. And I know across the history of this store, there's been a variety of different mocks for sale. So obviously this is a shop. You can buy the Lego that you're seeing here, but you can also sell your Lego as well. And if you really want to, you can sell mocks. Uh, now some of these mocks aren't cheap, which is fair. You think about the amount of man hours that went into this. It's more or less a one of a kind model, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it's just really cool to know that you can buy mocks, especially some really well-built modular buildings from a bunch of really talented builders who've brought them in and just, you know, want to make a bit of extra money. And uh, it seems like a pretty lucrative way to get a bit of money if it's something that you're willing to do. Uh, but I think there's something so cool about seeing modular buildings for sale. I, I know if I came into this store when I was uh, a lot younger, still a, a y foal or a t foal teenager, young fan of Lego, uh, I know I would have lost it. You know, I remember seeing uh, when I used to live in, in Chicago, very briefly, I've grown up most of my life in Australia, but when I was briefly there and I went to Brickworld Chicago, I would lose my mind at some of the incredible mocks that were there. And I remember just like hoping that they would let me buy it or just walk away with it or something. I was never going to steal anything, but you know what I mean? Like, you just wanted it to be a part of your collection because you wanted to play with it or just have it because you thought it looked so cool. So the fact that you could actually walk into a store and achieve that dream, I think is really magical. Uh, and I'm sure there's some builders today who um, would just love to own something else that someone else has built or you know, maybe they're a little bit newer to building and they go, hey, I'd love to buy a really unique modular building and add it to my Lego city or something. It's, uh, it's really cool that that's available here. Let's finish up here with uh, one of the cooler shelves. It's sort of off in the corner, but it's got some of the coolest stuff. It does have a few poly bags here and there and some of these VIP coins, which I've never been super interested in those. But it also has a few more of those store opening figures, but a lot of the Comic-Con figures are over here. Now those are incredibly rare, incredibly hard to find, and because of it, they demand a pretty hefty price. Uh, so we can see some of them here and then. Absolutely beautiful to see. A again, this isn't something you see every day. These are not common. But you also see certain figures here like this Yo Django Fett, the original Django Fett. And uh, here you can see it for $400, which again, pretty reasonable, pretty average price for that figure. It's a very expensive figure. But at least one thing with Atlanta Brickco is you know if you're getting it here, it's legit. Uh, Chris, the owner of the store, he makes sure that some of these really expensive figures are, you know, have a story behind them and everything so that they know where it comes from and make sure that it is official Lego and all that sort of stuff. 
so you know your money isn't being wasted and you're getting what you're paying for. And while all the Comic-Con figures are really special and all these other rare figures are lovely to see, one of my favorites is this employee manager figure here. There's these like manager conferences that LEGO does and they'll print off some of these super rare figures and give it out to the people at the conference. Uh, and sometimes they manage to kind of leak out into the community here and there. Uh, but uh, you know, like you can see here, it's a figure dressed up like uh, the way the uh, employees look like at the Lego store, or at least kind of used to look like with the yellow apron. Uh, but it's uh, not a cheap figure, but a really cool one. I mean, there's a lot more to the store, and if you check out my other video, you can see even more of the behind the scenes of the store. So if you've enjoyed this, there's a little bit more there for you. But in the meantime, let me show you what I bought. This is a live footage from the hotel room right after I left the store, so it's not the best quality. But you can see that I bought a bunch of pieces at that pick a brick station there. Got a lot of greys and browns and greens and things, mainly for landscaping stuff, castle mops, that sort of thing. But it was such great value, I was very happy to get uh, a good whack of it there. I also bought a few of these uh, Star Wars Ultra Build figures, Django and Rey specifically. These were very cheap at the store. I got Rey for some of the cloth elements and the tan and Django because he's got some nice printed pieces and some unique CCBS pieces in nice colors. So very happy to get those there. I bought an old Rock Raiders set. I think it was only like $10. It was missing a couple pieces and that's what made it a bit cheaper. But I've got a nice bag of minifigures here as well. One of the coolest ones in there was a custom big fig kingpin mini figure from Marvel really liked him and you can also see an Aquaman brick head there because that has some good pieces in it and it was nice and cheap so I managed to get that one there got a big fig green goblin figure and this Hulk poly bag both of them I think uh, especially if I kind of dress up the green goblin figure a little bit I think they would look nice as orc mini figures for more fantasy castle mocks so some future plans there I bought some of these light up lightsaber pieces and a few other light focused bricks I also got a CCBS Hulk figure here which is such a weird figure but it was nice and cheap at the store so I had to add that to my uh, CCBS Lego Bionicle collection uh, and then I also got this cheap Infinity Gauntlet 2 because it has so many gold pieces in it it was already you know pre-built and everything and I was just going to take it apart to put it in my suitcase to get it back home but I was very happy to get those gold pieces for cheap because there's a lot in that set it's a nice parts pack oh and when Mark Erickson was showing me around the store he was kind enough to give me some of these Q part pieces here so very kind of him there thank you Mark but that's everything. Hope you enjoyed that tour and also got to enjoy seeing what I bought. Thank you very much for watching. Happy building and bye for now.